Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. On iTunes, one word, Dwyer Boxing News. For the podcast, DwyerBoxingNews.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, my heyday was in the uh, 1980s and 1990s. That's when I was running the streets, right? One of the biggest debates in the African-American community back then, and it was major, right? Uh, probably still going on today. But one of the biggest cultural disputes, and I'm serious about this, involved Luther Vandross. And the question was, which Luther was better? Fat Luther or Skinny Luther, right? You know, you had a lot of people who would say, hey, look, you know, Luther looks good then, but he was a better singer when he was big. Now, let me just say to the gamblers out there, because I'm guessing a lot of people are going to be in sports books looking at NFL Sunday, and they're going to be looking at the NBA. That eye is going to wander, and they're going to, start looking at NBA futures because a lot of us feel that futures are the best way to gamble right they're gonna look at the Cleveland Cavaliers let me be blunt here right big muscular LeBron when LeBron looked like a weightlifter in my opinion was better than thin LeBron right maybe thin LeBron has prolonged his career okay that's all that's all good Right? I'm not saying Thin LeBron is not an all-star. And I understand he's injured right now. Maybe that knee's more serious than we realize. Maybe that's why he lost the weight. But let's just say the guy who had the weight on him with the heat was a better player than today's Thin Man. Right? You need to fade the Cavaliers with the quickness. In part because Thin LeBron is not the same as Big LeBron, right? Just like, in my opinion, Thin Luther's not Fat Luther, who was king, right? Um, LeBron's no longer as kingly as he once was. Also, understand that for really great players, and LeBron's a really great player, just like with really great musicians, they do better with talent around them right in other words you know it's not enough for Miles Davis to be great Miles Davis needed a great band right Duke Ellington needed a great band around him right it's a historical fact that James Brown actually had young Jimi Hendrix in his band, right? Understand, real talented guys, right? The truly gifted, they want as much talent around them as possible. In other words, Magic, as great as he was, did even better because he had Kareem, Worthy, Byron Scott, McAdoo, around him, right? You know, the truly gifted aren't intimidated by talent. They welcome talent, right? Because they know that'll give them an opportunity to hit even higher levels. Now, I've said this before in other videos. Look, let's face it. Chris Bosh and Dwayne Wade, I mean, Dwayne Wade today, if you look at player ratings, is one of the higher rated players in the league, and he's a shell of who he used to be. Understand that Bosh and Wade back in the day, just a few years ago, right, were a better supporting cast. Mike Miller, when he was younger, Right? They were a better supporting cast than LeBron has right now. 
with the Cleveland Cavaliers. To put it in context, when LeBron joins the Heat, Wade had already won a title, right? And he wasn't a role player in that series against Dallas. He was the main guy in that series, right? You look at the Cavs today, Kevin Love hasn't made it to the playoffs, right? Kyrie Irving is talented, but he's more a concept than a guy with the resume that Chris Bosh and Dwayne Wade had back in the day, right? That Mike Miller had back in the day, right? So to me, I look at this Cavalier team and I have no idea. I'm, I'm serious. I have no idea why in terms of odds they're being priced competitively with teams like the Chicago Bulls. You got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. I mean, if, if Paul Gasol were on the Cavs, he'd be their best big man. Understand, if Butler was on the Cavs, he'd be the second best player on the team behind LeBron James. Right? Um, Derrick Rose has won an MVP. You know, the Cavs coach, who is he? I'm guessing many people watching this video couldn't even name him. We know Tom Thibodeau is one of the best coaches in the National Basketball Association. Right? If you're in a sports book and you're thinking about futures, look, it's not time to get nostalgic. Yes, LeBron's a great player. Yes, he was even a better player when he was with the Miami Heat. Right? But this is not the year for the Cleveland Cavaliers. You need to cross them off your list. Focus on the teams around them. Right? Let's talk about something else. Let's talk about a need that you need to look at carefully. Now, it's my belief that there are two different kind of players out there. They're the players who the public knows are stars. Right? That help you win. Right? The public is blown away by the guys they vote for every year on all-star ballots. But then you have another group. These are the groups that GMs know about. This is the group that catches the eye of people like Jerry West. Right? The GMs know that these guys help you win. Sometimes even more than the superstars. Right? If this were pro football, these would be your linemen. Right? The GMs know the value of a good offensive lineman. I'm guessing in Cleveland right now, no one is more valuable to that team than offensive lineman Joe Thomas. Right? Fans, of course, know Johnny Manziel more than Joe Thomas. Trust me. Right? The team knows Joe Thomas is much more valuable. Right? Than Brian Hoyer, Johnny Manziel, plug in the name. Right? Josh Gordon. Well, in basketball, the secret sauce to the Golden State Warriors, in my opinion, are not the shooters, right? I know Klay Thompson just had a great day. I can go around the league and find another Klay Thompson. He's much more abundant than the guy in the paint, Andrew Bogut. Andrew Bogut's knee is the most important joint, in my opinion, in the Western Conference today. If you don't believe me, just look at the last box score. Just look at the number of rebounds he pulled down per minute. In fact, forget the last box score. Just figure out his stats per minute. You don't find rebounders like this every day. Right? It's so thin, teams are lining up trying to get Jermaine O'Neal to join their teams. Right? This guy's a major rebounder. He's a major shot blocker. Understand that Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, Harrison Barnes, Draymond Green, they're much more dangerous. Much more dangerous. With a real big man in the paint. There's more going on in basketball than scoring. Right? You need a big man who's going to provide you with rim protection. 
block shots, boards, who's going to take the other team's big man and make him understand, hey, son, you're going to have a hard time moving me off the low post. You know, hey, that fake turnaround you have, my hand is going to be up in your face. And whether or not I block the shot, I'm going to alter the shot. Right? The big man position is so thin in the NBA today that they've even watered down the NBA All-Star selection process. Because there aren't enough big men in the league today. <laughs> For voters to say, oh, I'm just going to check the box next to Shaq's name. You know, oh, yes, I'm just going to check the box next to Akeem Olajuwon's name. And know I'm taken care of in the paint. Where are the Shaqs and Akeem Olajuwon's today? I'm telling you, there was a bidding war for Paul Gasol. Teams like the Oklahoma City Thunder. The Chicago Bulls, even the San Antonio Spurs, are interested in Paul Gasol, who's older now. Why? Because there aren't a lot of fly young centers in this league. There just aren't. Right? And so the bottom line is this. If Andrew Bogut is out or is gimpy, if this is a Dwayne Wade situation where... You can't even bank on Bogut to play every game in a given week because that knee is bulky and he can't play back-to-backs and he's going to miss key games. Then the Warriors don't have a chance. I don't care how great a shooter Steph Curry is, and I think he's the best shooter in basketball today, or Clay Thompson or the other guys. But if Andrew Bogan is out there, and if he's healthy, and if he throws down the kind of game that he threw down in the first few weeks of this season, the sky's the limit, right? I don't see teams like the Clippers being able to compete. Sorry, Blake. Sorry, Chris. Sorry, DeAndre, right? I just don't see teams like that being able to compete, right? But... There has to be a presence under the basket. A jump shooting team can't get it done without that presence under the basket, right? And that presence has to be more substantial than David Lee. So as you look at all these power rankings that have the Warriors ranked number one, as you look at the board and you see futures odds where you're saying, hey, the Warriors look reasonably priced, understand the Warriors' destiny comes down to Andrew Bogut's knees, right? He just had platelet enrichment therapy or something like that, something exotic sounding where you know the injury's serious, right? They're casually saying things like, oh, yes, he has some cartilage damage and stuff like that. Ooh. Let me tell you, it's hard to find, other than torn ACL or torn Achilles, two more troublesome words for a basketball player than cartilage damage. Right? If Bogut is healthy, ooh, 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 Golden State is nasty. If Bogut is not healthy, then it's a close but no cigar situation in a conference that has teams like the defending champion San Antonio Spurs, right? Paul Gasol's brother, Mark Gasol, MVP candidate in the Memphis Grizzlies. And yes, Durant, Westbrook, they're still out there, right? Lillard, Allridge, they're still out there, right? The water's too deep for any team to try to do it without a real presence in the paint. If Bogut ultimately is forced to shut it down, then you might as well cross the Golden State Warriors off the list. Outside shooting alone and David Lee inside is not enough. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. To the NBA people out there who are chomping at the bit to talk hoops, right? I know 
because of the bowl games and stuff like that, because of the pro football playoff games, right? I understand that football has dominated the discussion. If you're a hoopster, I hope you leave a message with your thoughts on which futures appeal to you and why. You know what? I know the Washington Wizards are causing a lot of noise. Understandably so. I hear you from the ATL. I know Kyle Korver can hit threes in the middle of a snowstorm. Absolutely, I know that team is on a mission. Right? To the people in Detroit, personally, I think you're getting a bit too carried away, but whatever. Right? If you feel your team might have legs in the playoffs, that your team is worth the future's risk, I hope you leave those comments here in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.